here we go. We started to put the frame to mount the solar panels up there, made out of some reclaimed inch box section, some frames that were left lying around, and the angle iron, the big angle iron is on top, welded in place. At this right hand end there's a little cover strip welded round to fill in the top of the uh, box section and on the back there's a strut and that's on each one of them so that uh, angle irons attached very well then the frame goes on it's just clamped in place at the moment but at strategic points there's bits of angle iron welded on doesn't want to focus that's better and there and there and there's a join in these frames somewhere where is it about there that'll have a piece of uh, box, uh, angle iron welded across it to strengthen it all up and then when this is complete which means I've got to put another piece of angle on the end of there and extend the frame along then there will be struts from the frame down to the trailer frame there front and back I'm not quite sure maybe from the frame down to the front and maybe from these upright, uprights down to the back but whatever I do I will um, triangulate it but um, it's work in progress um, I will catch up with you when I do a bit more okay here's a bit of an update we've got the whole of this frame set out welded in place with strategically placed bits of angle iron there and there and I'm assuming and I'm very hopeful that I've got them all exactly in the right place to clamp the panels onto and it's a bit of a sort of miserable day at the moment I'm just waiting for this steel to dry off. I've wiped it off but it needs to be drier before I can continue putting black bitumen paint on it. And then as you see we've put some stays from the main upright there down to a bit of the original trailer frame and then between there and there we've got an upright there which goes to the front edge of this panel mounting frame and we've done the same where are we there we put a strut down there to there and then an upright and I might very well put an upright from the rear of the trailer frame right up to let's go up to that top rail there just to sort of increase the stability but it's pretty good now we will obviously have to put a um, a drawbar let me just zoom out we'll put a drawbar on the front there and when it's in place with the panels on we will put all sorts of weight in the bottom of this old tires and that sort of thing yeah maybe some concrete slabs but at the front will have a jack where is the front let me just see oh, there it is where the drawbar is there'll be a jack to um, to lift that front end because that is slightly heavier that front end and um, we might even put a jack at the back or something like that just something to increase the stability right we've obviously got somebody 
cutting hedges in the background so we've got background noise and as you can see it's a sort of grey day and the turbine is just going around very slowly that is not the camera making it look slow it's actually going slow right I'll wait for that to um, dry up a bit more and then we'll put some bitumen paint on there so it's a grey old day it's um, no wind no sun no generation November I did a video about that a few years ago so we put a piece of wood between the frame and the actual back of the panel and I've marked out where this needs to be there we go and I've got to drill this because uh, the mounting frame that I've built is based on the materials that I have so therefore you have to adjust accordingly as far as I can see there's no point designing something around some fictitious materials that you haven't got and then going off or even organizing a cutting list and then going off and having everybody cut everything to the size you want that is a recipe for um, extreme expense whereas at the moment this frame has cost um, well you could say um, a quarter of a box of 2.5 welding rods which came from Uncle Harold's shed so thank you Uncle Harold and some uh, cutting discs about I don't know half a dozen I say the dozen at the most of those four and a half inch one mil thick uh, angle grinder cutting discs and uh, half a four and a half inch grinding disc that is the total cost all the rest is materials that I've got in stock when I've picked them up for nothing do you want this lump of steel yes please and following on from that when I was last in Brighton Nigel said do you want this piece of butyl pond liner I went yes please and I'm now using it or a little bit of it just there to pad between the panel and the steel frame just because of um, galvanic corrosion possibility although the panels are anodized and the frame has got two coats of black paint on it but you know this will be the last time the bolts that hold these on hopefully will ever be moved so a piece of rubber butyl rubber strip between those two doesn't go amiss does it and you know I've got it in stock so thank you much for that Nigel and thank you Uncle Harold for the welding rods so I'll continue with drilling this there's only one more to do so here's the fixings now these and my neighbour used to get some steel frames that came with Renault trucks, lorries and uh, the frame was absolutely and outrageously strong and all it did was bolt the the spoiler that went onto the cab, top of the cab it bol bolted it onto the back of the bed where the fifth wheel went and in amongst that the steel was very good, I've still got some, 30 mil by two and a half mil wall box beautiful stuff anyway there was these brackets in amongst that so I saved those which are perfect for this job we got some six mil stainless bolts we got some washers and some nuts job done eh so then those brackets there it all makes sense now 
the top bolts on the panel hook over those and the bottom ones hook under those and the washers hold them in place. Focus, there we go. Simples really. And then I just apply Loctite to the that super strong stuff where you have to apply a lot of heat to get them undone. Just to make sure that they stay there. Right, let's just have a brief look. And there we are. Yeah, and when we go down, down some more and over, there's a pair of bolts are there holding the edges of those two panels. Right, but this, that's just the way I do it and the, uh, the Loctite just makes sure everything's secure. But you don't have to do it this way, you can do it any way you want as long as they don't blow off and generally disappear. Okay, six panels fitted. Yep. And we've got a bit of a drawbar for the little tractor and a windy handle. And then we've got these stabilizers here, if I can see them. Yeah. And when you wind the handle up, well, I'll show you, shall I? And then these can pull out for moving. And then that's more stable. We'll probably put a uh, a block or something under the back there when it's in place or put another jack there or something like that but there you go it's moving on so next uh, video will be probably wiring it up I think I'm going to have the inverter I don't know where I've said this already but I'm going to have the inverter on the trailer this time uh, otherwise we're going to have cables absolutely everywhere so I'm going to put this next to another set of grid panels and the cable that is DC at the moment can become mains and the each of the arrays can then have their own inverter on them and of course we'll have a main socket there as well that can be used for other things so instead of having to lay another quite a long cable we're going to use one cable for mains voltage and so each of these panels will be feeding I don't know one and a half kilowatt maximum so a pair of these arrays will be uh, uh, three kilowatt which will be fine for the size of the cable because I think it's a four mil cable anyway comments and discussion as usual I'd love to hear what you think about this and um, we'll catch up on the next one. Cheers for now.